In this video, I'm going to show you how and why to upgrade the hard drive in this PS4 Pro to an SSD. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we've got this PS4 Pro here, and as I'm starting to transition more and more gameplay to my PS5, I want to kind of get the PS4 Pro here into a state that I don't have to worry about having, you know, this thing dangling off the side of it, you know, containing all my games. So in this video, we're going to show you how to install an upgraded hard drive, a bigger hard drive, uh, in this case, happened to be an SSD. Now, why SSD? Does it make things faster? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Some things may be a little faster, but overall, it's not going to be so much a matter of speed. It's just a matter of if I was going to buy a bigger hard drive for this, then it makes sense to buy a 2.5 inch SATA SSD because they're making the SSDs cheaper, they're making them bigger. You can get them in sizes like 500 gigabytes, 1 terabyte, 2 terabytes, even 4 terabytes. So we're going to go ahead and put 2 terabytes in this PS4 Pro here. And that way I can kind of whittle down the games that I had on here. This thing is a 4 terabyte and it wasn't even close to being full. So I'm just going to take the games that I want and get them all inside this machine here so I don't have to worry about that dangling out of the back anymore. So to get this done, we get three basic steps. Step one is to back up our games off of the PS4 onto some kind of external media. Step two is actually physically removing the old hard drive, putting in the new hard drive. And then step three is going to be restoring the games and the software, the operating software, onto the PS4 Pro. Now to get this done, we're going to need a couple things. First, we're going to need a USB drive. This one happens to be 8 gigabytes. That's going to be plenty big enough. That's going to be to copy the uh, new operating system off the internet and get it transferred onto our PS4 after we get the new drive in there. Second, we're going to obviously need the new drive. In this case, it's a TimeTech 2.5 uh, inch SSD, and this is a 2 terabyte. I've used a lot of these for different types of upgrades, and they've all worked out great. I'll have links to a couple different sizes down in the notes below. And then we're going to need some kind of a drive to back up our data. So depending on how much games you have on here is going to determine the size of what you need. So you may get like a USB drive like this. It may just be a big thumb drive. You can get like a one terabyte thumb drive. What I'm going to be using is going to be an external enclosure with an NVMe SSD in here. I'm going to use that to back up the data. Um, again, it just has to be the right size and we're going to see in the settings here on the screen it's going to tell us how much we have to back up and that's going to determine what we need to plug in to back it up. So now that we got all the parts assembled that we're going to need, let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, step one is going to be backing up the games off of the old hard drive and to do that I've got my portable SSD plugged into the front just in one of the USB ports up front here and we need to do that before we go into the backup settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our settings. We're going to scroll down to system. And then we're going to scroll down to backup and restore. And then from here, we're going to select backup PS4. Now, once we do that, it's going to look to see what's on the hard drive. And this one is pretty clean. This one doesn't have very much on it, just one game. So you can see we've got the applications, some saved data, captures, themes, settings. And the biggest is obviously going to be your applications. So if you have filled up this old one terabyte or 800 you know, gigabyte drive, then this number is going to be a lot bigger. And the device that you're going to plug into it is obviously going to have to be a lot bigger. So in this case, if you want to see what's in there, you can see all the applications that you have. And you can come through here and you can select or deselect some of the ones that you may not want to back up. But I'm just going to leave this as default. And it says that the free space after backing up on this drive, and this is a two terabyte external drive, it's way overkill for what we need, but I had it sitting around, so that's what I'm gonna use. And then once we're ready, we just hit next. We can give it a description if we want, but I'm just gonna hit backup, and it's gonna start by rebooting the PS4 and then start copying the files over. So after it reboots, it's gonna start backing everything up. Now obviously the amount of time this takes is gonna be uh, vary depending on how much you're backing up and the speed of the device that you have plugged in to your USB port. All right, now that's complete. 
And this is a good time to remind you that every time this PlayStation reboots, you're going to have to hit the PlayStation button again on your controller before it wakes it up. And at this point, you can hit OK. And then the PlayStation is going to reboot again. It's going to ask you to hit that PlayStation button again. And then you can log back in, and we're back where we started. So now that we've backed up the information onto the hard drive, the next thing we need to do is look at our trophies. And if you have any trophies on here that you want to save, uh, you need to make sure that you back them up and you can hit the option button and sync with PlayStation Network. So we want to back those up to the PlayStation Network. Now, obviously this will only work if you have a PlayStation Network account that you're logged into. If you're just logged in as a guest, then this information won't be saved. It doesn't get saved on the USB and without a cloud account, it won't get saved there either. So once you have gone and saved all your trophies, then we're done with this uh, PS4. We're gonna shut this thing all the way down by going over to the power, going down to power options, and then we're going to turn off. We don't wanna enter into rest mode because we're gonna turn it all the way off and we're going to unplug everything and take that old hard drive out. All right, so the next step is gonna be physically removing the old hard drive and putting the new hard drive in its place. So I've, again, powered this thing all the way down, unplugged all the cables from the back, unplugged the power and the HDMI. And this right here is gonna be what allows us access to that drive. So with the thing turned upside down, staring at it this way, we're gonna grab this right side right here of this plastic and just pull it out like that. That's gonna give us access to this little screw here. So take a small screwdriver, Phillips head, and we're gonna loosen that screw, bring it all the way out. And then from there, you should just be able to grab this right here and pull it straight out. Now, one little trick that I've seen that if you can't quite get your finger under there or if it's gonna hurt too much or you can't pull is to take an old like USB cable or something and then putting it up in there and then pulling it that way. So after you take that out, we're gonna take this old drive out of this casing with the four screws on either side and pay attention to how it came out and how the connectors look. Because when we put the new one in, we wanna make sure that the connectors are lined up the same exact way. So in this case, we got the circuit board on the bottom. So I'm gonna have this label on the bottom and I'm gonna put it in right there. So let me take these four screws out, put the new drive in, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've taken the old drive out, put the new drive in. You will notice that the new drive is, in my case, a lot skinnier. So you will have a little bit of a, an air gap there, which is fine. You just have to kind of line up the holes and put those screws in, and this is good to go. Now, as far as the old drive goes, remember, we haven't done anything to this yet. So a good thing to do is kind of label this. I'll take a Sharpie and put PS4 Pro on here or something and set that aside in a safe place because worst case scenario, if, if our installation goes bad with this new drive, then all we have to do is take this one, put it back in, and the PlayStation is back to exactly where it was when we stopped. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and slide it back in. So we're gonna line it back up and we're gonna push it all the way in until we know that it's made good connection with the back there. And then we should have one screw left that we're going to put right back in its place to hold that hard drive in there. With that back in its place, we can go ahead and replace this plastic shroud by kind of starting on the left side and then snapping it back in on the right. So now the PlayStation is done. The next step is gonna be restoring the system, operating system on there and restoring our games back to the hard drive. All right, so this next step is gonna require a PC. So I've got a Windows laptop here that I'm gonna be using. You could do this also with a Mac computer, uh, but you're just gonna to go to this link and I will have this link uh, down in the description below. And once you get to this link, make sure that you do not do this one, the PS4 console update file. We're gonna skip past that and get to the PS4 reinstallation file. So this is gonna be just a, a file that we're gonna put onto this USB drive that I've got in here. So we're just gonna click on that and allow it to download It'll be called ps4update.pup. So we're going to let that download. Once that's done, we're going to drag that right onto the USB drive. 
All right, now that the file is done downloading, I've got my USB drive plugged in here. That's this one right here. And we do need to make sure that that is formatted as FAT32. So I meant to mention that before with whatever drive you use to back up your data before it needs to be either FAT32 or XFAT. It's probably gonna be XFAT if it's a large drive. So this one is formatted as FAT32. You can always double check that by going to properties and seeing that right here is the file system. So once we get this drive in here, we need to create a folder. So new folder, we're gonna call that PS4. And then we wanna go into that folder there and create a folder called update. So new folder, update. And then we're gonna take this file that we downloaded from Sony and we are going to drag that right into that update folder and let that copy. Now, if you bought a cheap USB 2 thumb drive like this one, it's gonna take a minute or so to copy over, but go ahead and let that copy and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so once that's done copying, we're just gonna double check to make sure it did find its way into the update folder and it did. So we can go ahead and get out of there and eject this disk. And we can take that out of the computer and we are done with the computer. So let's go ahead and take this and get it loaded up onto our PS4. All right, so I've taken the PS4, I've plugged in the HDMI and the power cable again. Up front here, I've got the USB drive that we just made in Windows. And then here's a USB to micro USB cable because we need to plug in the DualShock controller. And because we are updating the software, it's kind of forgotten that this controller exists. So we're gonna plug it in by cable first. And to get this done, we're gonna go over here to the power button and we need to boot this in safe mode. So to boot this in safe mode, we're gonna push this power button and we're gonna hold it in and wait for two beeps. After the second beep, we can let go. So there's the first beep. There's the second beep and now I can release. So this will boot it up into safe mode. So the first thing it says is connect a DualShock controller using a USB cable, that's what we did, and press the PS button, so I got that. And then we've got a menu of options here with only one thing that we can really do, and that is initialize PS4. So that's gonna, like it says, reinstall the system software. So let's hit okay on that. It says connect a USB storage device that has the update file. Now, that's what we just plugged into the front. That's the one that we created in Windows. And whatever the newest version that you downloaded right from the Sony site is going to be the right version. So we're going to go ahead and select OK. And hopefully at this point it's going to find that file that's on that USB drive. Remember we had to put it in the PS4 slash update folder. Make sure it's in there. So if it doesn't find it, you can just go ahead and reboot and try this again. But hopefully it finds it on your first try. So it looks like it found the file and it says this PS4 will be initialized. All users and data will be deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? Now, of course we do because that's a brand new disc in there. So it's not erasing anything. It's just copying over a brand new disc. And we're just gonna allow this to go ahead and do its thing. It's gonna probably reboot a couple times and then uh, I'll catch you up when it's done. So here it is actually installing the update. So just like any other time you're installing software do not turn off the PS4, make sure you keep it turned on the whole time. And I'll check back when this is done. Alright, so after the update it rebooted a couple times and we are now at the screen that it probably looks like just like it did when you first took this thing out of the box. So it says plug in your cable, hit your PlayStation button. We've already got that cable plugged up. And now we can go ahead and step through the setting up of the PS4. Alright, and we are all the way back to the PS4 home screen. So now I have unplugged the update disk and plugged in our backup disk. So now we want to head over to settings, scroll all the way down to system, backup and restore just like we did before. Uh, this time we're going to do restore PS4. So it finds this right on that disk. You have to make sure that that disk is plugged in first or else it won't find anything. And this is the backup file that we used just to back this up a few minutes ago. And we want to go ahead and restore. Now it says the PS4 will be restored. After res restoration starts, the PS4 will not return to the current state. Are you sure you want to continue? So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes to that. And it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna rest restart a couple times and copy that data over. Now this is where a faster drive is really gonna help out. 
this smaller USB 2 drive was fine for our system update, but for this type of data, you definitely want to have something that's USB 3 or 3.1. All right, so after that copied everything over, it rebooted again, wants us to hit the button, log back in, and now we can see that that Batman game that we put in there is back there again. So everything is copied over. If you had more than one game, obviously they'll all copy over the, everything that you backed up. So at this point, we are done. We have successfully upgraded the hard drive in our PS4 and restored everything back onto it. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If you've got something besides the PS4 Pro, if you've got either the, the old fat one or the skinny one, I've got videos for both of those. I'll go ahead and link them down below as well. Hopefully this helped you out. If it did, give me that thumbs up. That helps out the channel a lot. And if you like this type of stuff and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.